go. Good. So uh, this is your. We were trying to figure it out before the the number of pride parades that you've uh, that you've done. Um, I think it was three as prime minister now. Uh, yeah, this will be my third. Yeah, yeah. this the, the three big ones. Uh, beyond pride, you do a fair bit of this kind of thing, main the food, going out in the public, and that sort of thing. What what need are you fulfilling as PM? Uh, when, when you appear in public so much often like this? It's just to connect with people, uh, to, to get a sense of, of you know, what, what matters to them, um, you know, have contact and connection with people. I mean, that's quite frankly one of the things that, that democracy is evolving into is a, is a space where people aren't happy with leaders that they are, they consider, um, overly remote. I mean, I think the social media age means that people are used to feeling connected and they want to see uh, their leaders out and articulating the values that they stand for. When I show up at a, at a pride parade or at a multicultural park celebration or whatever, or a historical, these are articulations of things that are values that we all share. I almost see it as like a salesman in chief job that you've taken on for the country. Um, no, that, that's more when I go internationally. Um, domestically, uh, it's not about selling selling the country to Canadians. Canadians know how great our country is. Uh, you know, I think I have to do a, a little bit of a, a, a harder job uh, drawing in investment, drawing in you know, global uh, forces to pay attention to what a great thing we got here, how amazing Canadians are. Uh, but that's a small part of the job that I have. Mm -hmm. The the uh, I mean, you're out in the public eye so much, and it sort of begs the question, possibly from these pre-internet social media type people, that wondering when the last time was that you were behind a desk. Uh, your predecessors are didn't weren't out nearly as much as you were, uh, as exposed as you were. Uh, what do you say to them? I spend an awful lot of time behind a desk. Uh, the the work that I do as as a prime minister has me on uh, phone calls, conference calls, briefing notes, briefing books uh, all the time. Uh, there's an awful lot uh, to do and, I, and I'm glad to do it, but you also have to do it in a way that stays connected with Canadians and in order to do that um, I'm continuing what I've been doing for years, which is doing the hard work of getting out, meeting with Canadians, listening to them, talking with them, and being part of this country that I have the responsibility to serve. It's it's like I, I always thought that I saw you during you know, I saw pre pre PM Trudeau when you were campaigning, uh, uh, post Trudeau's con uh, basically a continuation of that. You'd never not that you're not to say that you're campaigning, but you're almost you're out nearly as much as you were then. Well, I think one of the things that, that people hope for in a democracy is that the values and the approach that you choose someone for uh, are going to be the values and approach that they uh, lead by. You wouldn't want someone to pretend to be one way uh, when they're getting elected and then completely change uh, once they're doing the job you chose them for. You want to be able to present something that is consistent and authentic to who they are, and that's exactly what I've been doing. I'm someone who listens to people, who engages with people, who understands the concerns that, that people are facing, and have you know, put together an extraordinary team, uh, with, uh, and, and we work very, very hard to respond to the real issues that are out there. Mm -hmm. the, the, it's, it's sort of a lovely day, and people seem to genuinely love you. I mean, the, 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 the poll numbers over the last year have more or less maintained. There's actually an interesting parallel with your father to make on that. Uh, I'll get to in a second. But the economic situation is a bit grim. Uh, 31,000 jobs lost in July. Uh, stagnation in terms of exports, despite the low dollar. Um, uh, you know, a lot of the growth in the economy based on housing, which is something that you reproached Stephen Harper for. Uh, at what point does this sort of stuff catch up with you and affect your government's favorability. Well, I think one of the things we've been very, very clear of, and we have been, uh, had been clear on throughout the election campaign, even in the lead up to uh, to the election, was that Canada is facing significant economic challenges. I mean, we have strong fundamentals, but uh, we were overly dependent on a single resource, counting on the high price of oil to maintain us through uh, 10 years of otherwise sluggish growth from, uh, from Stephen Harper. And what we needed was a new approach, and that's exactly what we're 
we're putting forward by putting more money in the pockets of the middle class, by raising taxes on the wealthiest 1%, by lowering taxes on, on, on middle class Canadians. Right. I mean, these are investments in infrastructure that are necessary. These are things that are setting us on the right path. None of them were ever designed to be quick fixes. Uh, they are I mean, when you invest in infrastructure, you get a strong uh, you know, boost in, in, in hiring and construction. But in general, they're things that will get our economy on the right footing for the next uh, next decade. How long? It's, it's going to take mean, the time it does. Because, because if it takes too long, and this is the argument that I've, been, that I've, that I've heard for a bit, which I kind of agree with, if it takes too long, you begin to suffer because people sort of start seeing that you don't necessarily, that, that you're not meeting up the promise that you were that you'd made in other words I'm, and that starts, I'm not, that starts affecting you personally but I, I, I'm not, it's, okay affecting me personally my, my job is to is to you keep this country um, together prosperous and um, reflective of its of its core values uh, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. And you know, polls will go up, polls will go down. Uh, my focus is what are we doing that is the right thing? And I'm, uh, like I've said, I pulled together a great team. We're working very, very hard on that. Uh, we're remaining engaged. We're listening to Canadians. We're working with uh, you know the top scientists and engaging the civil service in terms of finding the kinds of solutions for how we move forward. This is a challenge that the world is facing. I and mean, we're seeing a polarization. We're seeing frustration, whether. It's it's yeah. Brexit, whether it's what's going on south. Canada uh, is putting forward a progressive, meaningful set of solutions uh, that we're working on. How did we, the, the Brexit parallel and what's going on in the States uh, without naming names uh, and to a certain extent in France with, uh, with, with the, the right movement in France and whatnot, um, that all sort of came to a boil around or right after our election in 2015. Those, the, the roots were there. Uh, Canada took a completely different path. Um, what is it that we were different than everybody else? Why did that happen, do you think? Uh, you know, Canadians had the same choices uh, that, that you know, other people around the world did. Um, you know, there was, you know, there was a, a strong, incredible party that was talking about um, you know, Nickabs and snitch lines, and and there was a possibility of going down a more divisive track, uh, but we took the risk of putting forward a, a, a message that says, "No, we're better. Canadians are better than this. We can pull together. We know that diversity is strength. We know that uh, we can solve these things if we work together, and that's exactly what we're going to do." And you know, Canadians made a choice that I think people around the world would make if uh, there was a strong, compelling authentic narrative of uh, we're better. Uh, than our fears and our insecurities. And that's what you managed to do, I guess? Is that we're <laughs> That's what Canadians asked me to do. That's, that's what I, listening to Canadians for years, getting out there, working hard, uh, and engaging with them, uh, told me that it, we should trust in the, the better angels of our nature, and that's exactly what, what we put forward. I guess what I, what I wonder is, those better angels that you talk about, in the cases of Brexit and in the case of Front National in, in France, and to a certain extent in the case in the States, rise and fall with the economy. And that's why I was asking you the original question about the economy. Now, if the economy starts going south uh, or sour, uh, does that affect our better angels? Well, the economy has been flat for the past decade. I mean, the, the growth. Uh, but we didn't suffer nearly as much as anyone else, though. Well, actu actually, uh, Canadians uh, took on more debt. We didn't stop spending as much as the United States did, uh, and that's why their recession dipped harder. But uh, there is less debt in terms of the household level for them to recover from, and Canadians are suffering under levels of household debt that, uh, that haven't been seen in a long time. Uh, and the fact is that we... But made the choice in the last election. I mean, economic uncertainty was at the heart 
of the last uh, election campaign to one certainly something that, that right. the conservatives wanted to make of. Uh, and we tackled that and we said, you know what we need? We don't need to keep taxes high on, uh, we need, don't need uh, to uh, lower taxes for the wealthy, we need to raise them on the wealthiest. We need to make sure that in the middle class has opportunities. We put a contrasting idea forward for the economy and Canadians responded to it. Mm -hmm. I, but I would argue still though that we fared better, our banking system survived. Uh, we have lower unemployment for, uh, than, uh, during the during the rough rough years than uh, in England and L look elsewhere. At, look at household spending patterns uh, in the years following the reception, recession. Uh, Canadians, so 2008, 2009, because because, because our um, because our fundamentals were strong, because our banks didn't collapse, Canadians didn't feel the need to uh, pull back their spending as much as uh, other countries did, and now they're carrying more debt. And the recession is is over, the 2008-2009 recession is over, but people still haven't recovered in terms of their, their household finances to the right degree. And that's, that's where measures like the, the Canada Child Benefit that we brought in, measures like lowering taxes for the middle class, measures like an increased, uh, increased the guaranteed income supplement for our most vulnerable seniors, uh, are going to make a real difference. Um, you mentioned in there, just uh, quickly, the oil sands. Uh, to what extent uh, were they damaging to our recovery? Do you think, in the terms of in the terms of, of the fact that oil, the price of oil fell out? Oh, obviously, a lower price on oil uh, is going to hurt the Canadian economy, particularly in the oil-producing provinces of uh, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and, and Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, but uh, you know, for for ten years, uh, the oil revenues contributed massively to, to the Canadian economy. We will always have a strong part of our economy reliant on natural resources, which is why we need to continue to develop our natural resources, but we need to do it responsibly. We need to get them to market, but we need to do it sustainably and responsibly. Um, You're talking about but, pipelines there? Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, but. Uh, we need to do it in such a way uh, that we're also diversifying in the knowledge economy, in the universities, in the, in the jobs of the future that are going to come. Uh, to switch gears a little bit, uh, certain, I'm just looking over the last year, this is your first year uh, in office, parallels with your dad, you know, both sort of propelled into office with a certain breaking of the status quo, um, sort of a wave of goodwill, both keen to sort of leave your mark on the, early on on the government. Um, what did your dad experiences teach you about, say, for example, the, the demands of the job? My dad taught me about values. He taught me about principles. He taught me to trust but, but Canadians. Speci but specifically about the job, about the, the nuts and bolts of being prime minister of to, a country. To make sure you remain a good dad while you're being a prime minister. <laughs> from example or counterexample? No, from example. Yeah. He was an extraordinary dad. Uh, and that's uh, that's exactly what I'm I'm very much uh, uh, focused on because it makes makes you a better person uh, to be a good parent makes you a better leader to be a good parent. Uh, the uh, under him PMO got bigger PCO got bigger it's sort of the machinery around the PMO grew. What about what's your experience? What's what are you going to do or what are uh, you doing? I I'm, suppose I'm working on making sure that that we uh, have uh, government by cabinet, where cabinet ministers are uh, actually responsible for uh, delivering uh, to Canadians what uh, what we got elected on, uh, and bringing around me the best possible people and empowering them to do their job uh, is exactly what Canadians expect from their government. Last question: When was the last time that we had a a government by cabinet, in your opinion? You have to ask a historian that. I'm focused on. Oh uh, come on. on <laughs> well, I know. I know what I what I inherited in terms of a, a system of of, uh, of civil service and and cabinet approaches. Um, you know, wasn't government by cabinet. Uh, I'm making sure that uh, we restore it. Great. Thanks a lot. Pleasure, Brady.